I greet the church with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Today is a day of celebration in the presence of the Lord because the Lord was already waiting for us and prepared this banquet. We participate of the beginning of this banquet and be the banquet is prepared for us. Now the second part of this banquet will be the meditation on the word of the Lord to which I invite the brethren to stand up in reverence to the reading of the Bible of the Lord which is located in the book of Joel. The book that was written by the prophet Joel, chapter 2. Book of Joel, chapter 2. Blessed be the name of our Lord. I worked mightily in our behalf. Have everybody found? Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, for it is at hand, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like the morning clouds spread over the mountains. A people come great and strong the like of whom has never been, nor will there ever be any such after them, even for many successive generations. A fire devours before them, and behind them a flame burns. The land is like the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Surely nothing shall escape them. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us close our eyes. Lord, Father, we praise your name because your princes presence has been perceived in a mighty way throughout the, the praises. Now we need you, Lord, to meditate in your word, for in it there is life for our lives. Lord, allow us to be able to reach what is beyond the letter, what is prophetic. Lord, we know the letter kills, but the spirit vivifies. That's why I ask uh, your blessing in the meditation of the word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everybody may, be, may sit down. We're going to hear a song that will be sang, that was prepared for tonight. Seek uh, from the Lord and experience uh, through this uh, praise as well. Glory to Jesus.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. The text that we just read speaks of a horn. And in the Old Testament, this instrument was made out of a horn of a sheep. This animal, the sheep, had to be killed and removed this part of its body. And this process was a laboring uh, process and is very lengthy. And it had to be remove everything, uh, everything flesh, and nerve, or every, any other part that was, may have been inside of that horn. And it had to be left to dry on a period that was long enough so that that may be nothing else inside that may prevent the sound that, w sound that was going to be produced when it was going to be used to make an announcement. It was called a shofar. Shofar was used in many circumstances to proclaim and to warn and to give a, an advertisement. And one day, an animal was killed in order for the shofar to be manufactured. And in the same way, one day, our Lord Jesus died so that we would know eternal life. And he went through a process of suffering that was mentioned in the song that we just, that has just been sang. If you paid attention to the lyrics of this song, it's a conversation with the Lord Jesus and us that one day accepted his salvation. The suffering, the suffering was extreme. There's no human suffering that can be compared to what Jesus went through in order to give us salvation. The dryness that the horn had to go through to be produced, Jesus was compared to a root of a dry land. The dryness of the treatment of the Jews, the ones that he had come for, they treated him with dryness so that he could also give us life. There was there the very harsh sun was trial. Forty days and night he fasted in order to be approved by the Father. And my brethren, when Shofar was blown, an important message was being relayed. A sign of war, a sign to run away because the enemy was coming, a sign of celebrations. There was proclamation for celebrations that was done to the Shofar. And tonight, well, we want to say to each one that entered here that there is a wonderful presence of the Trinity of the Lord uh, regarding this message tonight. Somebody had to blow the shofar. Somebody had to hold on the shofar and blew it. It's the presence of the Father, the Godfather. Shofar speaks of the Lord, Jesus himself that died in order to give us eternal life. And the sound that came from the shofar is the Holy Spirit that today brought to you here. He is the one who invited you and you gave heed to his voice tonight. The Trinity is together with us, working so that we may have a celebration. And whoever has already fed off of this, the praises, who uh, felt the presence of the Lord, even when uh, the children prayed. The, those are the people that are paying attention to the sound of the shofar. They are paying attention to the voice of the Spirit. If you came here, you 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 heard the voice of the Spirit. You were sensitive to the voice of the Spirit. Shofar blew and was blown, and you came here. If you're here, there is a blessing for you. There's a promise from God for your life, so that you might have life, so that the judgment that is upon the world may not fall upon your life. Joel was a prophet that was used to prophesy the pouring out of the Holy Spirit. And he said that uh, on the end of the days, the Holy Spirit was going to be poured out upon every flesh, and he has been poured out to every flesh. Today we have children, and even the elder, they have been used by, uh, with spiritual gifts because the Holy Spirit has been poured out to every flesh. Now we have men and women 
that independent of their titles, they have been used by the Lord, receiving information that come from eternity for the salvation, for the deliverance, for cure, and for deliverances. The Holy Spirit has been poured out. Joel prophesied, and it was fulfilled. In the day of Pentecost, there was tongue that was split, and people speaking, everybody understood, even though they were speaking in different languages. And we know that the glory of the Lord, the power of God, it exceeds our understanding. Who can, can understand the mind of the Lord? And now, you and I, we can take possession of a salvation that is universal. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We have news from all around the world, even from Japan, in which the work of the Spirit is being is happening. The, the voice of the the do dove is being heard. The process is happening with trials, with difficulties many times. But the Lord always uh, could count it on few. Many are called, but just few are chosen. Many are invited, but few are those who hear the voice of the chauffeur. The chauffeur has been blown. He has sounded to proclaim the blessing of God to man's life and to warn him to get out from under a judgment. The voice of the Lord echoes throughout the earth. Interesting that when the Lord explained to Noah that he was going to destroy the land, many mocked him. Many didn't hear him. He did what happened with, you know, he heard the voice, the, the sound of the chauffeur. And he told many people, this is the ark that God sent to give us salvation. And then he said, no, you're crazy. They didn't hear it. And the deluge came. And those who heard the voice of the Spirit were saved by grace. Eight people were inside of that ark. And they had been rescued. And they were delivered from death. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Egypt, in Egypt, there was a promise that the lamb had to be killed and the blood was put uh, around the door so that there was not going to be coming uh, judgment to death to the firstborns and those that heard this message they woke up and the firstborn was still alive blessed be the name of the lord so now we're proclaiming the birth of the lord jesus how many have paid attention to that moment the pastors there were the shepherd they were paying attention. They were taking care of their flock. They heard. They saw the sign. They heard the voice of the angel. And they saw the glory of God. That's why we, as a small church, there's no reason for us to be minimized, to feel minimized. Much on the contrary. We can feel privileged because we are part of the small group that has heard the voice of the Lord, that has paid attention to the sound of the shofar, the chauffeur is playing. This great event was supposed to happen, which is was the death of the Lord Jesus. He pro announced to his disciples, he said, "We, I need to die. So uh, a few even got scared. They said, I'll defend you. It's not going to happen. And they said, this is in order to be fulfilled the prophets, but I'm not going to leave your orphans. I'm going to send you my Holy Spirit. He died. And in the day that he aspired, and he, when he saw and looked to, high, to the heavens and said, Lord, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Because as the suffering that went through and the cross, pain, they have, he has been spitted on, uh, cursing, none of it removed our Lord Jesus from the target of, the, of or the objective of salvation and eternal life. At that moment, he saw that his love needed to be exercised when he said, forgive them, Father, because they don't know what they're doing. So at that instant of judgment, there was a negotiation between Pilate and those that wanted to accuse Jesus. And he said, consciously, I don't see any blame on this man. Do you see it? I don't see it. I don't see any reason to crucify him. This man is innocent. 
And they said, May there be, may they fall the blood of this innocent upon our lives. And they chose this, they chose to crucify Jesus. My brother, the price that the Hebrew people, the Jews pay and still pay to this day is very high because of this expression. They entered under a judgment. They went under a judgment that they had chosen themselves. He may the blood of this innocent fall upon our, us and our children. And when Jesus was hanging on a cross, as each uh, drop of blood fell out of his blood, t uh, drops that were f falling from his head, from the uh, crown of uh, thorns that was in his head, you are king of the Jews, they said, and they put a crown of thorns on his head. And from there, blood, drops of blood fell from and when he was in the cross, before the cross, he began to pray because knowing, because he was the Son of God, because he knew the suffering he had to go through. The Bible said that he he sweat blood, how afflicted, showing how afflicted he was. When they put put nails on his heads and feet, more blood fell, and uh, when he was tortured, more blood came from there from those wounds. And when the spear was trusted on the side of his body, the Bible said that water and blood fell, and showing that the Holy Spirit had been poured out upon the flesh, and that his love would not be prevented from coming to us. The love of God is cannot be measured and indescribable. We cannot. There is no height. Then there is depth or width. Those are the measurements that we know, but there is a measure that to us is revealed, it is the measure of eternity, which is the revelation of salvation through Jesus Christ. And it goes beyond human comprehension. What you and I cannot comprehend is what was being proclaimed. And many doubted. Many didn't want to see. Many watched as a horrible spectacle. But in the moment that they said, Father, he said, Father, in your hands I give my spirit. He was there showing that the sound of the shofar once again was making an invitation, an invitation for, to life, an invitation to salvation. He was expressing that there was an invitation of love to go into an eternal life. So he expired and the soldiers came to show that they were sure that the, the life had been gone from his body and it was a habit that if they are not died they used to break the legs of of uh, the person on the cross to finish the spectacle because many were already leaving so when they came to Jesus they realized that he was already dead because also to fulfill the promise prophecy that none of his bones were, were going to be broken and bones speak of a, a structure of a revealed work that one day the Lord planted on your heart and our, my heart and this work of the Spirit sustain us our body would not have strength to stand up or if we didn't if we didn't have the blood the bones how we would we remain standing the Lord gave us this structure here are the bones that will never be broken the church spread all over the, the earth how many years have we prayed for the work on our, around the world and we see that the bones have not been broken and at that instant the bible says that there was an earthquake the sky darkened lightnings and even those that didn't believe that jesus was the son of god the bible registered that one of the soldiers that was not a believer one of those that had tortured jesus mistreated him even those that were there as the ones that were the perpetrators they said in fact this one the son of god and to this son of god and this is the son of god that we're proclaiming tonight is a chauffeur that is being blown tonight we as a faithful church of the lord have the presence of the father that blows in us the, the, the breath of life the message of life and salvation as the world preaches death and as the word tries to 
make programs on the internet to generate that and adolescents and teenagers. The church has uh, a breath of life and the shofar has been expressed. Come, come to life, come to the waters, come and eat and take possession of victory that has been decreed in the cross of Calvary. This is the invitation of the church. This is a warning from the church. Shofar is being blown. The horn is being blown. And there is another event that is about to happen. By faith, we believe that much sooner than we expect, he died and promised to send his Holy Spirit. And he is among us, uh, burning our hearts, his love that constrains us. Because, in fact, we don't, don't trust, it, don't deserve this love. But he said that one day he was going to come, and he was going to come in the clouds, and I will call you by name. And this day is near, Maranatha is, hap is about to happen. I would be, it would be a blessing if before the service finished, that we would hear the sound of this trump, this wonderful trump, and this shofar, which is the shofar that I have been waiting for, the most important of all, that we may enter and meet our Lord in the clouds and our bodies being transformed, all the pain going away, every tear of, of our face being dried. To the world is going to be a day of darkness. For those that saw this sacrifice of Jesus, it was a day of darkness and sadness. It was a horrible spectacle. And for the church of the Lord, it was the beginning of all things. The enemy was thinking that was destroying the project, but the project was just beginning. And the church at that moment was strengthened because the Lord raised, rose on the third day and He uh, would go into places without even opening the doors and He would say, Peace be with you. And He's telling to you and I, Peace be with you. Is you are so afflicted? If you entered here afflicted tonight, the Lord has shown that a few entered here in that way. Why? Because they don't have assurance of salvation yet. Because they are attached to the sacrifice of Jesus. They have not been able to achieve uh, resurrection of Jesus. It was a day of sadness and pain for those that were geared towards the things of this world. Because Jesus was dying and a few forgot the promise that he was going to be resurrected on the third day. But when he resurrected, the, the hope was restored. The hope of life was restored. Thomas didn't believe because he was not present at the first meeting. And he said, I will only believe if I see it. And Jesus presents uh, himself another day on the day when Thomas was, and he said, peace be with you. And Thomas was very uncomfortable. And he saw the signs, the marks and the wounds. And he was be able to be constrained by the love of God and know that the Lord Jesus was alive. And he is alive. We can hear his voice. We can feel his touch. We can feel his presence. We can see the operation and wonders that happen among us. My brethren, the local church, us as a church, local church, we have cures of blind. We see doors that have been opened that no man could have opened. We have situations of families that are being restored that psychiatrists could not resolve. We see signs among us. We see the signs of the Lord among us. So the shofar is being blown. Every flesh is being removed from among, for, from among us. And everything that of his word is being removed and the shofar is now is freed and the voice of God goes through and it echoes and we are used to bring lives to know Jesus, the Savior, the one who died in order for us to have life. The coming of the Lord Jesus is another event, event that is going to bring a lot of affliction, but only for those that didn't accept Jesus as his Savior. The Bible says that when Jesus comes, the world will be at the mercy of the enemy. The church will be raptured. We will be raptured. The word rapture means to be plucked quickly by surprise in the blink of an eye, like a lightning that you can see a lightning that comes from the east and see on the west. That's how it's going to be. Will be and all of a sudden will be plucked to be with the Lord in the glory. We'll receive a new body. We'll receive a new name. Yeah, it will be written in a white stone. That's the name of the Lord. That's what we desire. For the world will be darkness. Vehicles are going to be without a driver. There will be the desire to die and there was there is not going to be death. Because the Lord will establish the judgment. You know, brother, many religions 
they are afraid of preaching about this. They don't preach about this. Their contracts, the pastors sign contracts that they are going to, argue, going to preach about the coming of the Lord Jesus because this scares many people. But who does this scare? It scares those that are not hearing the sound of the shofar. They scare those that can't hear the voice of the Lord. They have not accepted Jesus. They are saved. It's going to be a day of darkness. But it's also going to be a day of joy. The birth of a new day will be the Lord in the glory. All the sadness is going to be go away. Today, everything that makes you cry will be over. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What brought you sadness? The Lord has shown you tonight. What is bring, bringing you sadness and anguish to your heart? The Lord wants to say tonight, if you accept Jesus as your Savior, there's nothing for you to fear. Everything will be made new. It's a new day and the perfect day of the Lord. That's why tonight we, what we're doing is simply to allow the sound of the shofar to echo among us. We're inviting you to life. We invite you to have a new life. We invite you to have a new way of life, not a religion. Religion the world is filled with. The world is filled with sadness. The world is filled with uh, darkness. It, as in Egypt, the house of the Egyptians was in darkness. The Bible said that the darkness was even palpable. But in the house of the Hebrews, there was light because they knew prophet, had received prophetically the, the presence of Jesus in their heart. And if you entered here tonight, know that we are not here trying to make you put fear in your heart. Our objective is to show that there is a reality that is proclaimed in the Bible, promised, proclaimed in the Bible of the Lord. And it is the Bible, of the, uh, the word of the Lord that we are preaching. So if you don't want to go through the sadness that will happen in this day, receive Jesus as your Savior. Accept the sacrifice of this animal of, uh, out of the shofar was made. And now the sound of this trumpet is being blown tonight. It's inviting you to get out of darkness into uh, light. The Lord wants to remove you from the uh, uh, a pl a horrible place and put your feet on, the, on a rock. Accept Jesus as your Savior and be prepared for the great and terrible day of the, the Lord. It will be a terrible day for the world, but it's going to be a great celebration for the Church of the Lord. We we are asking Lord, Lord, come, have a banquet with us. He is having a banquet with us. His love, He cures and deliverances. I know by faith that the Lord is operating from the beginning of the service. Is the Lord coming to have a banquet with us? But one day we are going to have a banquet with the Lord in the glory, and we're going to in the celestial mansions, and we hear the voice, "Come, blessed of our Father, receive us inheritance. The kingdom has been prepared." The Lord has shown that this word will bring fear, not of uh, be afraid, but respect and comprehension that we need to be paying attention to the prophetical moment that we live. The mass, the signs have been shown, wars and rumors of war. How can we ignore that the, soon the Lord Jesus is coming? Maranatha, Lord come Jesus. Close your eyes and may God bless you. And throughout this service, we're going to be saying that we may take possession of what this shofar has been proclaimed from eternity all through eternity. It's a message that is come, passing by us. We are just the vehicle of the uh, announcement of this message because the, the Spirit is saying, pay attention to this or listen to the invitation of the Lord and enter into eternity with the Lord. Glory to Jesus.
of hearing information of the Holy Spirit. Shofar has blown before the service and gave an information through the spiritual gifts that there is among us a couple and a woman. They are spiritually shackled. We are broadcasting. No, we are relaying the spiritual aspect they are going through. Spiritually, they are tied up. They are so they don't have the, uh, freedom. They don't have peace. A person in shackled is a person that is uh, humiliated, a saddened person, a person that is cannot move comfortably. It's spiritually like that. A couple and a woman as well. Three people. So if you feel that way, believe. The chauffeur has blown to you. The trumpet has been blown. This is Zion. The trumpet has been blown in Zion to guarantee your life, to remove from this darkness, from this sadness that he's going to be going through whoever doesn't have the Lord and those that have not accepted Jesus their Savior. If you encounter this situation, I'm going to use the verb by faith in the past. If you were in this situation, take possession of this victory. The Lord has delivered you tonight through the power of the blood of Jesus. That blood that was shed in the cross of Calvary. Biologically, the blood no longer exists, but the power is the same. The efficacy is the same to tell you that you are free. You are delivered. You may feel delivered and comfortable in the presence of the Lord. There is the power, the restoring power of the blood of Jesus. This is all because the Lamb was killed. And he died in the cross of Calvary. The, blow, the horn speaks of authority. Shofar is the symbol of authority. And today by faith, the Holy Spirit of the Lord with His authority is calling you from darkness to light. Is removing from a place of prison and giving you freedom. You know the freedom and freedom. Uh, you know the tr truth and the truth will deliver you. Jesus' presence, He said, um, and the way, the truth, and life. So take possession of victory. Don't leave this place in the same way you entered. The Lord has blessing for you. He has salvation for your life at this moment. Let's be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Close your eyes. Allow the, the Lord to visit you. Tonight is a night of salvation. Hear what the Spirit is speaking to you. may be saying to yourself, I entered afflicted, but I heard the voice of the chauffeur. I came here anguished, but I feel that I'm the presence of a God that can do all things. I feel like I'm in, in the tranquil waters and green pastures. What is going to happen? What, what is going to happen from now on? 
going to read the text there. Ahead of him, there's a devouring power. There's nothing for you to fear. The fire will be burning every difficulty, every iniquity, every inclination to the flesh, and the propension to sin. Ahead of him, there will be a fire. Behind, there's a, a, a flame. And, and behind him, a uh, uh, this desert, nothing can escape. When you see the Lord, when, when you're doing what you're doing, you take possession of the authority of victory of a God that can do all things. It's not impossible for Him. He goes ahead. He's going to open up the path. When there's no path, He's going to open up because He is the path and the truth and life. And behind it will be your past destroyed. Ahead of you is uh, the Garden of Eden, so in other words, eternity. The Lord has promised you eternal life, and behind you will be the world, the desert, will be hell, will be everything that before you you had promised for you. But today we're receiving a new promise, eternal life with Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is the promise. Take possession of your salvation. Glory to Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord. Is the Alpha and the Omega. Give your soul and your mind to the Lord. All the honor and glory. It's the promise of the Lord. Give the Lord all the honor and the glory. Open up your lips. Give glory, hallelujah, to the Lamb that is alive. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. The animal had to be killed in order for the uh, trumpet to be made. But once the trumpet was used, it was played, it was an expression that he's alive. Jesus is alive. He died, and, but he was risen from the dead. The blown blow the shofar is to show that he was dead but and he has reacted one day will come back not want to praise your name because this is the hope of your church we're waiting for you to come in the clouds Lord we praise the Lord because we desire your, your return want to thank you because you have helped us up until now the doors have been open we have not lacked anything our heart rejoices because you are a powerful god a living god a god that speaks to us hallelujah jesus we give you for everything that we have, have done and still to do in our lives in the name of jesus and whoever wanted to praise you can continue praying
I praise the Lord for, from the day which you had this wonderful meeting with our lives. We can affirm that everything was made new and that you remove everything that was bad and placed on the path of justice, Lord. Well, Lord, we praise you because it's good to serve you. Good, Lord, is to be a part of your kingdom, this redemptive work of this perfect work, Lord. Because we, we can say that the work of the Holy Spirit is perfect. Even though we are imperfect, that we may even be not worthy of receiving so many blessings of the Lord to our lives. But you are a God of love, a God that has not seen our imperfections, but has shown to us every day that the best thing is to be in your presence and to serve you, Lord, is to pour, uh, pour our tears on your altar. God, none of them is shed with, in vain, Lord, because you're, you're the one who pur purifies our lives every day. That shows, Lord, that the best is to serve you. The best is to be in your presence. The best is to be dependent on the Lord, because you are the only Lord that has the best for our lives has revealed our lives every day that nothing in this world can remove from your presence lord because you are a god of love that's why we glorify you and exalt your holy name tonight for your holy the holy presence of the lord in this place for your angels that you have sent from your eternity to visit your people that's why we praise you in the name of jesus Lord, receive our service. So simple, but it is the sincerity of our hearts. In glorify you and thank you for the promise has been fulfilled. Your spirit has been poured out to every flesh, and for the promise that will be fulfilled soon, the coming of the of Son Jesus, that everyone that entered in your house tonight receive salvation, deliverance. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The church may be seated. The praise group will be singing softly. If you identified with the gift that was being sang or, or the message or prayer that was made remain tell us your experience how the spirit touch your heart and if uh, you are uncomfortable somebody next to you may raise their hand in your behalf the burden here filled with the spirit and the lord who used them to blow the sound of shofar in, in their lives so this the instruments will be playing softly so the lord we have the right environment so the your blessing be complete tonight remain your hand risen if nobody came to you yet
And Susan continues, I would like to invite, uh, request the brethren to remain in, in fellowship with the Lord, in reverence, the Lord is present. A little bit. I'd like to invite, uh, the, the, I'd like to thank those that visit us. You're very welcome in the name of Jesus. And the church is here at your disposal to hold on to your hold and walk with you. We have service on Wednesday with the women and, and Thursday at 8 8 and Saturday at 7 30. We're going to have now a couple of images of the system that was made in Japan for by our press, local press last week like to wish you all the peace of the Lord Jesus. And this week, a prayer at noon for the family members, wherever you are, at noon, pray to the Lord. <laughs> 